All right, morning, everybody. It's good to see you all again for another edition of our Facebook live stream of Breakfast by the Bay. My name's Captain Chris. Behind the camera is Letty, uh, coming to you again today as we are every morning at 10 a.m. Uh, as part of our education department here at Save the Bay, bringing Narragansett Bay and marine science into your classroom at home. Uh, really excited to come to you with something a little bit different today than normal. We've been learning a lot about uh, plants and animals and habitats and things like that. So today we're going to try something a little different uh, called a sea shanty. And if you don't know what that is, it's all right. Uh, we're going to learn all about it in just a little bit. But I do want to remind you all that as we're going today through our lesson, just like normal, if you have any questions or comments, uh, make sure to write them down right in our, uh, our comment section of the video. And if there's any easy questions, Letty will be sure to ask them of me and we'll see if we can get you an answer. Don't forget um, the hard ones. Oh yeah, we'll see about the hard ones also. Maybe you throw me a hard ball also. Um, there is also a very important document in the description of the video today that you might want to click on now. It's called our Shanty Lesson. And that's actually going to be some lyrics that you want to use later on. So really excited again to have you along. And like usual, if you are tuning in, uh, we'd love to hear what school you would normally be going to uh, if you were in school right now. So let us know where you're watching from or what school would normally be uh, school at home for you. So what we're doing today is learning about something called a sea shanty. So I said we like to do lots of science, but sometimes we also like to focus on things like nautical history and land use. So that's what we're doing today. We're learning about these things called sea shanties. They are songs of the sea. Um, so we'll take a look over here real quick. Uh, and I'm just gonna remind myself of where I wanna be because I forgot already. Um, so the way we're gonna work today, we've got two parts. One, we're gonna learn about what a sea shanty is. And then later, we're gonna test out your singing voices by doing a little bit of a sing-along and learning two shanties and teaching you how to sing them. Now, the beauty of this is, like I said, in that link in our description are all the words. So it doesn't matter that you don't know the words right now because you'll have them in front of you to read along. And if you can't open that up, we are gonna be uh, showing you the lyrics on the stream here. Uh, Ms. Letty will just be looking at our lyric sheet to help us all out. The other part is if you don't like your singing voice, the great part about sea shanties is that they're meant to be sung really loudly. And the louder you sing, the more we'll drown each other out and we'll all sound great together. So I'll be leading the way, but I hope that you all are singing along today as we go. So again, uh, I'm Captain Chris. Behind the camera is Miss Letty. This is our Breakfast by the Bay. We're doing it every morning at 10 a.m. Uh, teaching you all about Narragansett Bay and different marine science topics. And today, learning all about sea shanties. So. Hey, what we're doing is, um, first we want to learn about, like I said, our sea shanties. So they're called sea shanties, or sometimes you hear it spelled as sea chanty. Uh, either is all right. It's just sometimes these songs sound a little more like a chant and less like a song. So that's why there's that alternate spelling there. So what happened was, if you think back hundreds of years ago, the only way to move people and move goods around the world was uh, on sailboats. There were no planes, there were no trains, no cars. So if you wanted to move things around the world, it took a big trip that was sometimes weeks or months or years on a sailboat. And as you moved around, you would go and stop in different countries and islands and ports. And sometimes people would get on the boat and get off. You would offload cargo and take it on, right? But these trips could be really, really long and oftentimes pretty boring. You might go days without having much to do, right? And so it could be pretty boring there with not a lot going on. It sounds like a lot of our homes right now, a little boring with not a lot to do sometimes. But then there would also be these spans of very intense work, things like hauling on sails or raising an anchor or scrubbing the deck. These jobs that are often better done with music. A lot of times, you know, you or I would just put our earbuds in and listen to a song. They couldn't do that then, so they would have to sing them. Also, something like hauling a sail is done a lot better when you all work together. So if you think about six people pulling on a rope to raise a sail, if everybody's pulling at a different time, then it's not a nice coordinated motion. But if you have a rhythm and you have a beat to pull together, then the work goes a lot better and that job is done a lot more efficiently. So that's why these songs were created, right? There was no Wi-Fi on board. There were no iPhones. You couldn't play Plants vs. Zombies in your bed, so you would be singing these songs. And so, so that's what these sailors did. They created these songs and they were usually about um, places like home or the people that they left behind at home, uh, like their loved ones and family members and things like that. A lot of times the songs are about the work you were doing or the jobs that you had while you were on board, uh, the type of fish that you were catching if you were a fisherman 
or maybe the island or the place that you were going to, to kind of give you some inspiration or motivation, something to look forward to by singing these songs, right? Um, and a lot of times they were done only with the human voice. They were done a cappella. So on board, you would have somebody called a shanty man. And it was their job to know all the words. It was their job to have a good voice and to lead the song. And then all the other sailors would just kind of sing along with them. However, uh, sometimes there were instruments. And I've got a couple images of some of them over here. So Ms. Letty will come over. So the instruments that were played were usually pretty small and compact because there's not a lot of room on board a boat. So you can't bring along a piano, right? You got to pack something small. So there were different instruments, things like what's called a fife, which is basically just a little wooden flute, something called a bones, which are a type of percussion instrument that were actually made out of whalebone. And you could put them between your fingers and hit them on your hand. A lot of times people play the spoons today too. It's a good way to keep a beat. Small drums were popular. Uh, this one right here is an example of what's called a bowron, and that's an old uh, Irish or, or Celtic drum. And a concertina, or a squeeze box, which is just a little accordion, basically. Uh, a fiddle was another very common one as well, which is basically just like a little violin. So if you weren't singing a cappella, I mean, really all you needed was your voice. These were some of the instruments that you might be playing as well. So there's records of these songs going back for hundreds of years, but they did become really, really popular in the 1700s and the 1800s. And that was a time when there was a lot of European colonization and expansion. So there was a lot of people out on the water on boats moving around. Um, it was also very popular to sing these songs when you were whaling, going out fishing for whales and things like that. So that's kind of what a lot of these songs are about. So that's kind of a history of sea shanties. Any questions so far about any of that, Ms. Letty? No, but people are very excited for this. Oh, great. I can't <laughs> wait. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, so they're probably excited for me to try and make a fool out of myself in front of the camera here, which is understandable, <laughs> but we'll do our best to not. Uh, so we're going to teach you two different shanties today. And again, there is a lyric sheet in the description of uh, the video. So if you click that, it'll open that up for you, for you to sing along a little bit. Uh, but I do have them here in front of me, so we'll kind of zoom in on those as we're singing along. Um, so the, the way these songs often work is in what's called a call and response. So I'll sing something, and then you sing back a, another set of words, another set of lyrics, right? And so when we're singing along today, when I'm expecting you to sing along, in both songs and the lyrics, I put all of the words that you're going to be singing in capital letters. So it'll be really easy to find out where you're supposed to sing. So the first song that we're going to sing is something called South Australia. And this song, if you uh, could figure it out, can guess it, it, it originated down around Australia on ships that were moving between Australia and the United Kingdom, Great Britain, because uh, Great Britain colonized Australia. And these ships would be bringing things like wool and wheat back from Australia to Great Britain, to the United Kingdom. And so this is where this song South Australia came from. And this is a, there's lots of different types of shanties. This shanty is called a capstan shanty. Now a capstan, if you picture a big kind of wheel in the deck with wooden pegs sticking out of it. And if you come on over, I'll show you a picture of a capstan. So this is a capstan right here, uh, if you can make it out. And so basically it was this giant wheel in the middle with these wooden pegs that came out and you would stand behind the peg and you'd all push the capstan together around in a circle to do things like lift a really heavy anchor. So you picture also, you might have seen something like this maybe in like Pirates of the Caribbean, Pirates of the Caribbean, where somebody cracks the whip and everybody starts working around the capstan. So this is a type of song for singing when you were around a capstan, right? So that actually kind of relates to one question we had come in. Yeah. Did pirates sing these songs? Absolutely. There's all kinds of really great pirate songs as well. Now, I've chosen ones today that are a little more appropriate to be <laughs> learning um, uh, on Facebook from Save the Bay here. But there are lots of songs that pirates sang and lots of different songs uh, for the different types of work that you were doing. So there's definitely pirate shanties as well. All right. So I'm going to show you how South Australia is going to go. Okay. And then I'm going to stop. Just going to sing one verse. You don't have to sing along quite yet in case you want to hear it all. And then we'll sing all together once you know how it goes. So Ms. Letty's going to come on down to our lyric sheet, and I will be pointing to where we're going to be through the song. And remember, you want to sing along anytime you see these capital letters. And also, you're going to sing when we get to the chorus. So here we go. Let's try this out. So you can listen first and then sing along later or join in now if you want. <laughs> so it goes. In South Australia, I was born to me heave away. Haul away, South Australia, round Cape Horn, we're bound for South Australia. And then we all sing together. Haul away, you rolling kings, to me heave away. Haul away, 
Haul away, you'll hear me sing, we're bound for South Australia. All right, so that's how that goes. So now you all know we're going to start up again at the top, and I expect you to be singing along at home. I want to hear you through the internet, all right? So let's try this once more. In South Australia, I was born to me heave away, haul away. South Australia, round Cape Horn, we're bound for South Australia. Haul away, you rolling kings to me heave away, haul away. Haul away, you'll hear me sing, we're bound for South Australia. As I walked out one morning, fair to me heave away, all the way, twas there I met Miss Nancy Blair. We're bound for South Australia. All the way, you rolling kings to me, heave away. All the way, all the way, you'll hear me sing. We're bound for South Australia. I shook her up, I shook her down to me, heave away. All the way, I shook her all around the town. We're bound for South Australia. Haul away, you rolling kings, to me heave away. Haul away, haul away, you'll hear me sing. We're bound for South Australia. All right. Nice job, everybody. I think I heard some of you singing along. That was great. Uh, there's a lot more verses, right? And uh, what we've done, if you forget the song already, you forget the rhythm, the beat, or how it goes, or the melody of it, there is a link to a YouTube video to a very similar version of this song in the description. So you, later on, when this is all done, you can open that up and practice along to that version. Now, again, don't be alarmed if you hear that the song is a little different because these songs always changed as they moved around the world. People would get off one boat and onto another, and you might stop fishing for whales and start fishing for herring, so you'd want to change the lyrics a little bit. Or instead of sailing to the Cape Verde Islands, now you're sailing to Hawaii, so you'd change the lyrics a little bit. So it's okay if you find words that are a little different. Stick to the lyrics that we learned today and just sing over that melody. Cool, and I just wanted to give one more reminder that if you follow the link in the comments, you can get the lyrics uh, so that you can just pull them right up because I think some people are having a little trouble seeing it. Maybe they're watching on their phones. Oh, great, yeah. yeah. So um, if you are watching on your phone, like Letty just said, um, and not your computer, when you get to a computer, you can open the lyrics up again. We'll try and make them a little easier to see for the next one as well. Yeah, I'll get so, as close as possible. Great. So that was South Australia. Uh, the next one that we're going to sing, the last one that I'm going to teach you about, is a song called John Kanaka. Now, John Kanaka originated uh, in the 1800s as well, and this is a song that originated in the Pacific Ocean uh, also, like, the, like South Australia. But these were generally people that were sailing around Hawaii and the Polynesian Islands, um, these boats were. And so this song, John Kanaka, it sounds like a silly name, um, and so what happened was, as these boats, mainly of the Europeans, like the English, were sailing around in the Pacific, they would take on a lot of people, a lot of native people from the islands, like the Hawaiians and the Polynesians. And the problem with that is they did not speak a lick of English, right? They, didn't, they spoke their native language from their home island. Um, and so not only could the uh, people on board the boats not communicate with one another, but a lot of times, like the English sailors, couldn't even pronounce the name of the person that was on board. They had a lot of trouble. So instead of trying to learn their name and how to pronounce it properly, they would give them different names, something that the English did learn is the word in Hawaiian or Polynesian, kanaka, means Hawaiian man or just man. So a lot of times, instead of trying to learn somebody's name, they would just give them an English name and the last name of kanaka. So these Hawaiian or Polynesian men became just Bill Kanaka or Joe Kanaka or John Kanaka. So that's where this song, John Kanaka, came from, uh, referring to a lot of these Hawaiian or Polynesian sailors that were on board these boats. So, and that again is all, there's a little history of that in the description on the Shanty Lesson um, link that it is in the description there. So we're gonna try this one now to sing along and we're gonna do the same thing. I'll sing once to you um, and kind of give you the idea how the song goes and then we'll zoom in on the lyrics, right? So you can get a, a better idea of how it goes. So this is still a call and response. So I'm gonna sing a part and then I'll point to you when you're supposed to sing, all right? Uh, and all you really need to know how to say is John Kanaka or John Kanaka Tu Laie, uh, which is basically just kind of a sing-songy words that have some Hawaiian origin, but today don't really mean anything. They just kind of got turned into lyrics. So this, the melody of the song goes something like this. It goes, 
I thought I heard the old man say, pull, and then you'll say, John Kanaka Naka Tulaye. Today, today is a holiday. Pull, and then you'll go, John Kanaka Naka Tulaye. Want to give it a shot? I think so. So come on, and we'll try and zoom in on our lyrics here. All right, give you a little bit of a better idea of how this goes. So again, we'll try just the first verse here, and then see how you do, and then we'll sing the first three. So it goes. And feel free to join in if you want to on the first try. Remember, all the capital letters are yours. I thought I heard the old man say, Pull, John, Kanaka, Naka, Tulaye. Today, today is a holiday. Pull, John, Kanaka, Naka, Tulaye. Tulaye, oh, Tulaye. John Kanaka Naka Tulaye. How'd that sound? You guys think you're ready to try all three verses for the first three verses of the song? We'll start over at the beginning now that you have an idea how it goes, and we'll go through the first three. Ready? I thought I heard the old man say, Pull, John Kanaka Naka Tulaye. Today, today is a holiday. Pull, John, Kanaka Naka Tulaye. Tulaye, oh, Tulaye. John, Kanaka Naka Tulaye. Well, there's work tomorrow, but no work today. Pull, John, Kanaka Naka Tulaye. Said there's work tomorrow, but no work today. Pull, John, Kanaka Naka Tulaye. Tulaye, oh, Tulaye. John, Kanaka Naka Tulaye. We're bound away for Frisco Bay. Pull, John, Kanaka Naka Tulaye. Yes, we're bound away at the break of day. Pull, John, Kanaka Naka Tulaye. Tulaye, oh, Tulaye. John Kanaka Naka Tulaye. Wow. Awesome. Great job, everybody. So again, on the lyric sheet that's uh, in the description, there's a lot more verses of that. So you can learn them all, and there's a YouTube link to a, uh, a song, a version of the song that's very similar to the way we just learned it and sang it. This one's actually a very common song for a lot of people to learn in elementary schools around the world, I found out uh, over the last couple months learning about this as well. And the fun part is that uh, just like sailors would add their own verses about their own home or their own people or the things that they were fishing for or catching, you can add your own verses and create your own verses at home as you have to do your own chores like sweeping or mopping or washing your dishes and things like that. So if you want to try coming up with your own verses and sing along to, that, uh, to the melody, that would be awesome and we'd love to hear about it as well. Any questions or anything, Letty? You have some rounds of applause. Oh, People are complimenting you. your voice. It's great all around. <laughs> all right, I love it. Well, like I said, in case you're tuning in from a phone or something like that, once this is uploaded to the Facebook page, it'll be there. And the lyric sheet is available, as well as a little bit of a mini lesson about each of the songs in case you forgot where they came from. And there's YouTube links to both uh, those songs, John Kanaka and South Australia, so you can practice at home. So if any of our former campers or future campers are watching, I hope you practice, and that way you're ready to sing along come the next time you're here for summer camp. Or if you want to share with us any uh, verses you come up with, we'd love to hear them as well. So thank you guys all for tuning in. We really, really appreciate all of your time you spend with us every morning with our Breakfast by the Bay series. Uh, super excited to see you again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And remember, if you love the work that we're doing uh, and are able to, any donation is appreciated uh, using the link that's in the description as well. So we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye.